We finally know when one of the biggest games for the Xbox One will deploy. The online multiplayer mech madness of Titanfall will arrive on March 11th. It'll be available for the Xbox One along with the Xbox 360 and PC, but so far there are no plans for a PS4 or PS3 version. Titanfall thrust players onto a futuristic battlefield where they have the ability to jump in and out of their giant mech suits. You may be wondering why you'd ever want to leave the safety of your metallic juggernaut, but developer Respawn Entertainment says there will be plenty of good reasons. We end up playing on foot so much because the wall running and the parkour movement and just the ability to get on top of the buildings and attack from above and the verticality that it brings to the gameplay, you totally want to. Plus, then you can use him as cover and he'll come behind you and just shoot people out of your way or just guard a place that you want him to. We'll have more on Titanfall before it arrives. Go, go, go! One of this year's biggest Oscar contenders will have to wait until next year. The new George Clooney and Matt Damon World War II drama, The Monuments Men, has been delayed. It was scheduled to begin duty on December 18th, but the studio has pushed it back until early 2014. Why did you do something like that? This means it won't be eligible for this year's Academy Awards. The Monuments Men had been generating Oscar buzz, but given all the other big movies on the way, the month of December will be a war zone. Coming out early next year means the film will have less competition at the box office. That's much better. Another likely Oscar contender, The Wolf of Wall Street, from director Martin Scorsese, will stand its ground in December. There were rumors that it might also be pushed back into 2014, but the LA Times reports that it will now arrive on Christmas Day. That means it will still qualify for the Oscars. Uh -huh. It stars Leonardo DiCaprio as a corrupt Wall Street tycoon, and this is his fifth time working with Scorsese. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And one actor who looks to be in the running for an Oscar this year is Matthew McConaughey. Along with The Wolf of Wall Street, McConaughey is generating Oscar buzz for his appearance in two other films, the indie crime movie Mud and the new AIDS drama Dallas Buyers Club. It tells the true story of a Texas man who contracts HIV in the 1980s. In order to help himself and others, he begins smuggling life-saving drugs that were still illegal in the U.S. at the time. McConaughey had to lose more than 50 pounds in order to take on the demanding role. I talked to two nutritionists, did my research, found out what not to do. There are many options on how to do it, but there was quite a few things on what not to do. And then I just committed to it. And I had the support of my family and my, my wife, and I ate controlled meals, and I didn't go have meetings at my favorite steakhouse. So you want to go grab steak sometime? I know it's red. Matthew McConaughey will get to find out if he's up for an Oscar when the nominees are announced in January. Dallas Buyers Club will begin rolling out into theaters next week, and Brianna will have a look at this week's new movies later today in the Sonar. He said it. A new game in the Troubled Aliens franchise is gestating at Fox. Following the disastrous response to this year's shooter, Aliens Colonial Marines, the studio has trademarked a new game in the franchise, Aliens Isolation. No other details have burst out, but hopefully the game won't suffer the same fate as the Aliens MMO that was canceled back in 2010. We'll let you know when more alien intel hits Earth. Over on the big screen, Ridley Scott is developing a sequel to Prometheus, which takes place in the same universe as the Alien films. The blue aliens of Pandora haven't seen the last of mankind's most militaristic bad guy. Avatar director James Cameron has revealed that the first film's villain, Stephen Lang, will be back in all three of the upcoming sequels. His character seemed to meet a pretty definitive demise at the end of the last movie. It's unclear exactly how he cheated death, but speaking with Deadline, Cameron says that anything is possible in science fiction. You gotta be kidding me. He adds that Lang will go through an unexpected arc over the course of the next three movies. Stephen Lang himself is looking forward to the new films because they'll give audiences a chance to learn more about all of the characters, as well as the alien world of Pandora. I think the sequels become obviously very, very important because they amplify the world. You need to amplify who people are, what's going on, introduce a whole host to explore the rest of Pandora, and to do so in ways that are as consistently up to the standards set by the first film, and I know that that's a priority with Jim Cameron. The first film sets a very high benchmark, and if the Avatar team can continue to play at that level, I think that it'll do just fine. All right, let's turn up the heat. Switch in 10 years. Earlier this year, there were rumors that the governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, would be playing a new villain in the sequels, but that's since been denied. All three new Avatar films will be shot at the same time, with production scheduled to begin next year. The first new movie will pop off theater screens in December 2016. Ah!